What's up, Brian Tong here, and welcome to the Apple Bite for everything good and bad inside the world of Apple. Lots of big things happening this week, but let's start off with the Apple TV. Now, Apple continues to insist on calling it the future of television, but the future might have to wait. That's after Bloomberg reports CBS CEO Les Moonves, who also owns CNET, said that Apple has put its live TV plans on hold at a conference this week. Now, Recode's Peter Kafka reports the main issue was Apple's push for a skinny bundle of channels priced at less than $30 per month. Apple is interested in a base package of about a dozen channels, but the report says content owners didn't want their additional networks to be left out of the base package. Now, Moonbez added that it will eventually happen, but media companies are still showing resistance to Apple's plan. Now, if Apple can't get this together by 2016, it will be a huge fail and will show us really the lack of power they have with TV studios. Sling TV and Sony's PlayStation View did it. Apple should be able to do it as well. But for now, the Big A is pushing their app store and allowing media companies to deliver content through their apps, a feature that's been around for years on Roku, Amazon, and the Chromecast. Unfortunately, that doesn't sound like the future of television to anyone. All right, if you're thinking of getting an Apple Watch with those $100 off holiday deals, you've seen them, you might want to hold off on that. 9to5Mac reports Apple is planning a March 2016 event to unveil the second generation Apple Watch. The Apple Watch 2 would then ship out sometime in April, nearly a year after the original. Apple has been working on the next watch before the first one even shipped, with some prototypes including a FaceTime camera, its own Wi-Fi to be independent of the iPhone, and a thinner form factor with similar battery life. This could make new Apple Watches a more worthwhile purchase, but I would highly advise you to wait it out for now. The report also says the rumored iPhone 6C that we've talked about in the past could also appear at the event. All right, Apple released some new hardware this weekend. If you saw it, you know it wasn't pretty. This is the $99 Apple Smart Battery Case for the iPhone 6S. This is also what it looks like when the iPhone 6S swallows an iPhone 5. Now, this eyesore is from a company that was believed to have one of the best design teams ever until now. Apple Biter's own Spry Flies on Twitter called it the hunchback of Apple Dom. And we've already had battery cases from Mophie and Incipio for at least four or five years. But come on, Apple, there has to be some technical benefit for the user if you made something this ugly, right? Well, you can see the battery status of your iPhone and case together in the notifications pull down, but the Apple case only gets you 80% additional charge compared to a Juice Pack Air from Mophie that gives you a 100% charge for the same $99 price. This isn't inventive at all. Slapping on an Apple logo and hoping users will buy the Apple branded version? Come on, let's be real. It's also just plain fugly. And you know what that gets? A bad, dirty, rotten Apple. <laughs> I'm literally embarrassed for this company right now. Apple, the one obsessed with making their phones as slim as possible, is now making their own battery case because their phones are too thin to get quality battery life. Yeah. Okay, another piece of hardware that I'm actually happy about. The Big A has released a lightning to SD card reader that supports the iPad Pro's faster USB 3.0 data transfer speeds to import photos and videos. You can also use the adapter with iPhones, but it won't get the faster transfer speeds. It costs $29 and is available now. There's also a lot of software updates across all Apple hardware this week. iOS 9.2, fixes the issue where iPad Pros would become unresponsive after charging. Thank you. You can also take advantage of the mail drop feature that allows you to attach files up to five gigs in size, and it makes iPhones compatible with the adapter we just talked about. But Apple still hasn't fixed the fact that video podcasts in the podcast app cannot be viewed in full screen. I mean, what are you doing, Apple? This is a simple fix, and you're still getting a bad Apple for this. All right, watchOS 2.1 gets mostly bug fixes and improvements with Arabic language support for Siri. And tvOS 9.1 now allows Siri to play Apple Music for users. But an even bigger deal, support for the remote app is back for the new Apple TV. And I know a lot of you will love that. All right, that's going to do it for this week's show. We're getting close to the end of the year. So if you have any questions you'd like to ask to our good friend Nosha Tong is for the Apple Bytes prediction show, send them to the Apple Byte at CNET.com. Or tweet me at Brian Tong, and we'll include your questions in next week's show. Next question. Thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you all next time for another bite of the apple.